Hey, so excited to be with you today and glad that we get to spend this time together in God's presence. You know, I believe that God is looking down from heaven right now and he's just smiling ear to ear because people all over the world right now are in their living rooms or maybe in their office places or wherever they've invited God into their private life decided to put him first. And I just want to honor you for doing that today and joining with us here at Central City Church. Today is going to be an incredible day. We're going to sing a song here on the front. Then we're going to go into the message. And then on the end, we're actually going to sing a song today. So I want you to stick around all the way through the message and hang out with us because we have a powerful song that's really going to move us in an incredible way. But here's what I want us to do. Before we go into worship, I know you want to hear from these guys. You don't want to hear from me right now. I want to invite the Holy Spirit to be present right where we're at. I want you to do that right where you're at. I want you to say, Lord, you're welcome here. Here's an invitation. Like imagine actually handing him an invitation, inviting him into your space right now. So as I pray, just let your heart be postured this way. So Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for who you are. And Lord, we don't want to do this or anything without you. So God, we come before you right now with an invitation. An invitation to be a part of our life, to be a part of our time of worship. God, to be a part of what is going on inside of us right now. Lord, some of us may not want to be in this situation. Some of us may be excited, but Lord, we know that we don't want to do any of this without you. So Holy Spirit, let this be your space. Occupy this place right now. Lord, we may not be together under one roof, but thank you, Lord, we're under one God together, one God who loves us, one God who has given up everything for us. And so Lord, we invite you to be a part right now. We give you glory. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship him with everything that's inside of us. Let's go for it. Oh 
our defense against the attack. We need to know what it is because we all go through battles, don't we? We all go through battles. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we've talked about in the past few messages. That's what we're going to continue talking about this week and the next few. Is we're taking a look at Ephesians 6, where Paul tells us and encourages us in this. Some of the things that we've already looked at, one is that he helps us to prepare our minds through this scripture. He helps us to prepare our minds. Secondly, he tells us about our enemy. That's very important. We need to know who our enemy is when we go into battle or we could find ourselves fighting against something that we're not even certain what it is. Very important information. Thirdly, he goes and he tells us where the battle is fought. We got to know where we're going into competition. We got to know where it's at. And, and fourthly, he tells us about the equipment that we need in this fight. And that's where we're at right now. That's what we talked about in our previous message. And that's what we're going to continue in is talking about the equipment. Pretty much he lays out the whole game plan of going into a battle and what we need to be looking for going into any fight or any competition. You, if you were to look at this, this, this chapter 6 of Ephesians, you would start to see this complete breakdown. And that's what I'm hoping through God's word, through him just speaking into your heart that we're all connecting with during this time. In the last message... We dove into the equipment of the belt of truth, and I hope you've had an opportunity to be able to check that out. And this week, we're going to continue, and we're going to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to talk about our shoes being outfitted with the gospel of peace. And I wanted to go into these last week, but I actually ran out of time. And so respectfully, I decided, you know what, I'm going to cut midway, and I'll carry this and roll it over to this week. And I want to be able to dive into this with you, and I believe that it's real important. There's a reason why I wanted to couple them together. So it's real important that you've seen the last and, and now you're coming into this because I believe God intended for them to be put together. He actually had Paul write these out in one singular statement. So you actually see all three of these components in one statement. So today my heart is to discuss the other two important pieces of this armor that we need as we go through these battles that we're all going through. And the truth is we're going through them, aren't we? I mean, probably right where you sit you're facing battles, you're going through things. And I know there's things that are constantly coming against my mind, uh, against my heart. And I've actually enjoyed some of the fight that I've had to come through in the past couple of weeks. And I'm seeing incredible victory. And this is what I'm believing for you as well. I've been praying over you and praying over this message that God's just going to move in all of our lives in a powerful way. So I want to continue talking about the equipment, but let's take a look at Ephesians 6, 14, verse 15. All right. It's going to be on the screen below me today. And it's says this, all right? Paul is, is telling us this information. He says, stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist. So you're already seeing this, what we went to last week. And then this is where we roll into this week's conversation with the breastplate of righteousness in place. So I want you to go ahead. I'm a visual guy. I want you to go ahead and start visualizing that breastplate of righteousness. What's yours look like, right? What's it look like? And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So I want you to see what it says right here at the very beginning of this verse. It begins with letting us know that this equipment is very much equipment to help protect our mindset because he makes a statement to stand firm, to stand firm. In the last message, we saw that the belt of truth is here to help us be ready, it's to help us be ready, to be ready for the fight, to be able to get into the fight. Taking hold of the truth really is the very first thing, the very first piece of equipment we need when we go into the battles we go into with our lives. It's the very first thing that we have to grab hold of is holding on to that truth because it combats the lies that are coming into our life. And if we have these lies that are showing up in our life and we're not ready with God's truth buckled around us, then we're going to find ourselves stumbling in our battles. We're going to find ourselves struggling through our battles. So it's so important to have this belt of truth. If we find ourselves believing things that just aren't true, then these attacks actually find themselves destroying our mindset. That's ultimately what the goal is. That's Satan's goal. He's, he wants to de destroy us in knowing who we are. And really, he wants to destroy us in knowing whose we are. You know what I'm talking about. 
And so we have to have this truth deep down inside. We discussed that there are certain things in this life that lead us into this trap of lies. And we went through those things. And matter of fact, I actually showed you out of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. So really easy. 2 Timothy, real like two, a lot of T's right there. T, 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 right? So 2 Timothy 2, verse 22. And it actually says this. I want to read it to us again. He tells us, run from anything, anything that stimulates youthful lust. I hope you've had that opportunity to be able to do that this week. You're like, wait a minute, Pastor, you telling me that you hope that I've, I've embarked on seeing things, lustful things I'm not supposed to? If that was in your life prior to last week's message, then I hope that the opportunity to implement God's word in your life has existed this week and that you have run from it. And you did what the verse continues to say. It says, instead, pursue righteous living. And this leads us right up to the very next piece that Paul talks to us about in Ephesians 6, and that's the breastplate of righteousness. So we're going to hang out. We're going to chat on this for just a moment because the breastplate has one purpose, has one purpose, and that is to protect your heart. It's to protect your heart. Almost any other blow to your midsection does not bring the same casualty effect into your life as a blow to the heart. So your breastplate has the purpose to protect your whole midsection, but your heart is its focus. If I have and know the truth, my heart can be covered by the righteousness of Jesus. Remember, it's called the breastplate of righteousness. So if I have the truth, then I can cover my heart and I can protect myself with the righteousness of Jesus Christ in my life. Through Jesus Christ, we have been brought into right standing with our heavenly Father. And that's what righteousness means, is to be brought into right standing. Jesus is our righteousness. And I actually wrote this down. I want to read this to you. The life of Jesus is intended to be a garment we put on. Did you hear what I just said? It's intended to be a garment, something, the life of Jesus, something every morning we wake up, we're supposed to put it on. You know, I want to show it to you in scripture. Let me show it to you this in Galatians 3. This verse has shown up every single week. So I want to show it to you right here. It says, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. We talked about that the past couple of weeks. And here comes the expression of what I just told you that Jesus is to be put on. It says, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. And what's it say there? Like putting on new clothes. So yes, Jesus is a garment when we think of him that we are supposed to put on every single day as we go into battle. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This means we are to wear Jesus as our righteousness to protect our heart. We're to wear Jesus as our righteousness to protect our heart. And why our heart? You may be thinking, okay, okay, why our heart, Brandon? Because everything, the scripture is very clear, everything flows from our heart. Everything. Matter of fact, scripture tells us that God looks at the motives of our heart. Let me show you a verse just to be able to support this out of Proverbs 4.23. It tells us this, above all else. All right, wow, that's a pretty powerful statement there. So just when you look at scripture, that stands out, should capture our attention really fast. Above all else, what's it tell us to guard? Your heart. Guard your heart. Above all else, for everything you do flows from it. So you've got this breastplate of righteousness put on that is Jesus because he is our righteousness. And every day we're clothing ourselves with him because it's protecting our heart. A blow to our heart will be what takes us down. So we've got to make sure that we're protecting ourselves because any attack on our heart will find us in a position of possible casualty and not experiencing the victory that Jesus has intended for us to have. And so the Bible is very clear. God is very clear that above all else, We've got to protect our heart. And what protects it? Jesus protects our heart. The heart is symbolic for our core. It's symbolic for our core. The very center of who we are. You may be thinking, you talk about that thing, like, boom, boom, boom. Like, that's what I got to protect. I need you to understand. 
when it discusses heart in the Bible, it's meaning the symbolic essence of the core of who you are, meaning everything flows from that position. You've got to protect the core of who you are. And Christ is meant to be the center of who we are. So let me, let me read this to you. I wrote this down. So you're hearing me say this right. Jesus is our righteousness. And putting on Jesus daily protects the Jesus inside of you from the attacks of the enemy. So you've got Jesus in the core of who you are, but now you have to clothe yourself with Jesus as well every single day, meaning not exposing yourselves to the things of this world that would allow the attacks to come in and affect your heart. So yes, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've got him on the inside of you. And he is now living at the core and the center of who you are, or he's supposed to be, but he's also supposed to be everything that you are on the outside as well. When people look at you, this is who they are supposed to see is Jesus. So Jesus put on on the outside protects the Jesus that you have on the inside. Are you following along with me in this? So how do we do all of this? You're like, all right, Brandon, I see it. I see some places in my life. Yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but how do I do this? How, how do I get there? Because I see you're talking to me, and, I, man, I, just, I, I feel like right now I probably have not been wearing Jesus on my outer garments, that, that if people were to look at me right now, they probably would not see a breastplate of righteousness. How do I do this? How do I get there? How do I move to this place? I'm glad you've asked, all right? So let me tell you. We go on and we look at the, what, what he lays out for us and, and, and what Paul has share, shared with us in this one statement. In this one statement, it may be two verses, but it's one statement. And when we get to this last part of the statement, Paul gives us the answer. Like, I love Paul because Paul is so practical. He makes sure we understand everything as clear as day, and, and it makes my job a lot easier. And so let me read it to you, and then I'm going to explain it to you so that way we all are on the same page and we're going to be better. Amen? We're going to be better. He says this in verse 15, near the end. He says, with your feet fitted. All right, so now we're moving on to the next piece. With your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from where? Here it is. The gospel of peace. You know, as I came to the end of this first sentence that Paul gave us, and I'm just sitting here staring at it, and there's so much still just, I feel the Holy Spirit pouring into me right now. As I came to this, I reflected back to the beginning of the sentence. I reflected back to it, and it reminded me of this root statement from the very beginning where he says, stand firm. Stand firm. Meaning these pieces, right now, what God said I need you to put on first, have to do with our mind have to do with our mind. And I thought again about our enemy. Like, I, I, I feel we're never supposed to forget our enemy. We've always got to keep in front of us his attacks and what he's doing. Jonik and I were talking earlier, and, and, and she brought something up about how things in the virtual world are, you know, it seems like people are disconnecting when we were hoping that what would happen is that Jesus was going to get more into our personal spaces and in personal lives, and we'd be more connected with Jesus. But I even had a conversation with somebody this week that they told me they were actually feeling more disconnected. And, you know, it's like right when we see excitement and see joy and see opportunity and see God's movement, what's Satan going to do? No, he's not going to go pile up in his, his devil recliner, right? His lazy devil recliner. He's not going to go do that. He's not going to go, well, there's not a chance anymore. Jesus has now taken the screens. No, what's he going to do? He's going to open up the doors for the attack even greater. He's going to come even harder because he's relentless. He's not giving up. I just need you to understand that. And so when I take a look and I'm, I'm diving into this and I'm just, I'm letting God just hopefully speak through me to you right now and you're seeing some things as well, I thought about the enemy again. I thought about the enemy. And what I started to realize is what the Bible has to say about him. I needed to be reminded. And I think you need to be reminded as well right now what the Bible has to say about the enemy that's constantly coming. The one that, that is bringing the attack through our screens when we were so excited as a church to have the opportunity to, to invite God into our personal spaces even more. Here comes the enemy. We've got to remember who he is or we will find ourselves in the enemy's camp. We've got to be careful. So let's, let's look at this because God's word tells us in John 8, 44, he actually lets us know that Satan is a father of lies. Remember, we're talking about these pieces of equipment that God talks to us first about through Paul. We're seeing that they have to do is stand firm. Where does Paul reference standing firm? 
in our mind. Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness. We start looking at the shoes of the gospel. These have to do with protecting our mind because this is where sin comes in first, is in our minds. And he tells us in John 8, that he is the father of lies. And I actually want to show you this passage for a moment because it's when Jesus addresses people that were following him. You know, we, we've get a, we get a lot of where Jesus addresses the, the Pharisees, the religious rulers and the authorities and teachers. And we get a lot where Jesus addresses even Gentiles and those that were not of Jewish descent. And then we get a lot where Jesus addresses those that are followers, people walking along with him. And that's what this passage is. He's addressing people that follow along with him. And it's interesting because these people are questioning him with their words and with their life, but they were followers? Like, help me understand that for a second. Like, think about that. Do you find yourself that I have? I, 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 I'm starting to relate. I, I, can, I can go back to times in my life, maybe even recent ones, where I can relate to this. Maybe you can too. Where I would call myself a follower of Jesus. And a matter of fact, people would be able to see it because I went to church on Sunday like you would love to be able to do right now. And people would know that if they called you on a Sunday morning, they're probably not going to get in touch with you, right? Because typically you don't have your phone on in service. Maybe, maybe not, right? And they can't get in touch with you because they know that's when you go to church. So they know that you are a follower of Jesus but just like these people, we find ourselves questioning him from time to time, don't we? And that's what they were doing. So let me show it to you in scripture. Because they were looking at him. They were too busy looking at him from their own perspective. So verse 43 in John 8. Let's look at it right here. I want you to see this, okay? Jesus is saying to them, why can't you understand what I am saying? Like, I think Jesus had a moment of frustration. Come on, you know what it's like. Like, you've got kids. Think about it. If you, those of you that have kids. You see other kids acting up a little bit. You see other kids doing things a little bit. Well, it, it bothers you, but not the same way when you see your kids acting up, right? That's what Jesus is saying right here. He says, why can't you understand what I am saying? And then he answers it. Well, it's because you can't even hear me. What? It's like my kids. Sorry, boys, I know you're sitting there on the couch. Just like last Sunday, every one of you just turned and looked at me, all right? So it's like with our boys, you know, or, you know, I'm going to flip the, the flip this for a moment. This is like my boys trying to talk to me sometimes when I'm watching TV. I'm just zoned out. And they're talk, 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 talk. And then it takes Jonathan going, babe, do you not hear what they're saying? That's kind of this kind of moment right now. All right, so I just helped you boys out a little bit. But that's kind of this moment right here is that he's going, it's because you can't even hear me. He's telling them, you're too caught up in how you see it. Way too caught up in how you see it. Verse 44, let's look at verse 44. He says, for you are the children of your father, the devil. What? I bet they started paying attention then. What do you think? Imagine if you're hanging out with Jesus. I'm a follower. I'm a follower. And then all of a sudden you left from this auditorium and you headed out into the world. And, and all of a sudden, right outside the door, Jesus was to meet you. And you're like, ah, oh, what's up, Jesus? So good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. And he's like, yeah, tell me about what you learned today. Uh... uh you know, the music was, it was awesome. Um, you know, my kids had fun. Um, seats were comfortable. Coffee was good. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was awesome. It was awesome, God. I mean, I just, it was great. It was great, Jesus. It was great. And then he looked at you. Right? He's got your attention because who he is. But he hasn't got your attention because you haven't looked at who he is. And then all of a sudden he looks at you. Imagine standing right outside our doors. And he looks at you and he says, for you are the children, the father, the devil. Whoa, time out. Wait a minute. No, I just came from church. I've been, I follow you. Do you not understand? I just watched the message online in my living room. Like, I follow you. And he's going, for you are the children of the father, the devil. And you love to do evil things he does. He's a murderer from the beginning. And that's where every one of us would chime in and we go, well, that's not me. Yeah, I never kill anybody. I mean, I may have thought about it, but I had done it, okay? I haven't done it. I've never moved to that place. I haven't ever, he's a murderer. I am not. I want you to see. This is, this is so necessary for us to see from God's word. 
I need you to see this. Because you may be thinking, I'm not a murderer, but I, I'm not like him. But I want you to see, watch right here, what Jesus says in comparison to show us that he's a murderer. And then all of a sudden you may go, oh. He says, he has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and a father of lies. He is a liar and the father of lies. What Jesus just said is you may be here with me, but your life doesn't look like it. Your life doesn't look like it. You're nothing more than a liar like the enemy. You're showing up saying you're a follower of mine. But you really haven't got Jesus as a breastplate of your righteousness. You haven't really got him covering you. You haven't put him on as a garment. It's not really how you're living your life. And some of you may not even realize that this is what's going on in your life. Like you may not even realize it. But right now in this moment, right now in this moment, you're seeing something about your life with Christ. It's, it's just not settling well with you right now. And you're going, maybe, oh, man, maybe, maybe I'm not. I don't want to be like the enemy. And, but if my life is a lie, and even though I call him that I'm following him, and well, I say I've got him on the inside, but I haven't clothed myself with him, what am I really saying? And if I'm not clothing myself with him, and I understand that if I don't do this, then my heart is now vulnerable. And these lies that are coming in, all of a sudden I'm going to start to not believe what it is I'm supposed to believe. I'm going to question who I am. I'm going to question whose I am. What am I doing? You see, I need you to understand right now, if this is what's going on with you, this is the truth speaking into your life. This is what the truth does. The truth shines light on the dark places of our life. It starts to expose these areas. It brings things we've been deceived about into the light. What do lies do? What do lies do? They bring uncertainty and discord into your life. They bring uncertainty and discord, the opposite of peace. But God's word, listen to me, the gospel of Jesus brings peace. That's why he's saying, I need you to put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Because when we start to take on the gospel into our life in this way, it starts to bring peace because of his future promise beyond our current position. God's word, the gospel of Jesus, brings peace because of his future promise beyond our current position. Like We, we start to realize victory is mine. It's, I'm, I don't have anything to fear. Victory is mine because heaven is my home. We know the truth going into every battle, and you can always be certain that heaven is on the other side of every single attack because you have outfitted yourself with the shoes of the gospel. For those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, heaven will always be there. Victory will always be ours. Praise God for that, amen? Will always be ours. The gospel of Jesus being in our lives gives us the confidence to step into battle. It gives us the confidence. Like if you have a fear of going into battles, then it's a possibility that you haven't spent time in God's word and outfitting your feet with the gospel of peace because there's only fear when we don't have his word in our life. Are you tracking with me? God says he doesn't give us a spirit of fear and timidity. But if you're afraid of going into a battle, you're afraid to face the enemy, chances are it's because you haven't outfitted your feet. Think about it. What good is it to tighten up the belt of truth around your waist? What good is it to put on the breastplate of righteousness to go into battle when you don't have shoes to step into battle with? I mean, just think about that for a second. We've got to have the right shoes to go into battle with. If I, I mean, you guys know I love some shoes, right? Like I'm wearing some Adidas rivalry right now. Come on. Right? All right, so I've got some, I don't know if you can see that, but I like them. All right, so I've got some sweet shoes on right now. They're so comfortable. I feel like I could run forever in them, but they're too pretty to run in, okay? And so I love shoes. But if I was going into battle, this is not what I would wear. 
because the very first time that somebody stepped on my toe, oh, and I'm running the other direction. Now I gotta have the right shoes on, the right ones. That's gonna be, bring. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to stick my foot out there because I'm not afraid of what's gonna try and step on it because I know my feet are sure because they are rooted in the foundation of God's word. Are you tracking with me on this? Are you seeing it? So how do we do all of this? How do we do it? Before we ever step onto the battlefield, we must know the truth by being in God's word. By being in God's word. Like, you just got to get in it. You got to get in it. Because when you've got this inside of you, and it's taking hold of you, and you're taking hold of the truth about what it means to have Jesus inside of your life because you're starting to see every single component of what it is that he offers you, you get to see victory's mine, baby. I'm a champion. Come on. I didn't wear this shirt on accident. All right? I step into battle knowing. I don't go in hoping to be a champion. I go in a champion. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. More than a conqueror with Jesus Christ who loves me so much. I can go into battle because I've got this down inside of me. My feet are outfitted with the gospel of peace. It's through Jesus we have victory. But let me tell you this. Without Jesus, if I go into battle and I haven't been in this, I'm going to loss. I don't, I, I don't know how to fight. Really, victory is lost. Whether I go into battle and I forgot to bring him or I go into battle saying, hey, I got this. Either way, victory is lost. You don't know Jesus, you don't know victory. Simple as that. Let me put it to you this way. Know Jesus, N-O, Jesus, N-O, victory. But you can also spin it and say, K-N-O-W, no Jesus, no victory. Come on, you know that was good, all right? No Jesus, no victory, no Jesus. Like, really, I'm talking about know him, know him. Then you can know victory. And you can go into every single battle, every single battle, not worrying about a thing. Because you already know that on the other side of this, heaven is your home. On the other side of this, victory has already been received. Knowing the gospel of Jesus is like knowing the game plan for life. None of us have ever successfully com competed in anything whatsoever, a match or a tournament, and not gone into it with a game plan. Now, you may have competed without a game plan, but I promise you, you probably did not have the success you were looking for. With God as our coach and his word as our game plan, success can be our outcome in any battle we go into, in any battle we go into. Today, if you don't know the message of victory through Jesus Christ for your life, but you want to because the battle you have been fighting is one you know that you've been losing. You know the battle you've been fighting is one that you have been losing. I need you to know this. All of that can change today. You don't have to start a new battle. All you have to go is, Jesus, I can't fight this battle by myself anymore, and he will show up. Jesus, I need you. Here's an invitation. Please come in. Please come in. And he will show up. He's given us the game plan. He's given us the roadmap. He's shown us what it looks like to fight this battle. You just have to get committed and get into it. He wants to be the, the garment that you put on every single time that you go into battle. He wants to so bad. All you have to do is make yourself available. All you have to do is make yourself available to him. Just like he made himself available for you and I. That's all you have to do. And here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do something different. We're going to go back into worship. And while we do this, here's what I would love for you to do. Start to let God speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Take the, few, the next few moments. Maybe you're in a battle right now. Take the next few moments to talk to God about your battle. And let him show you how he can help you get through your battle. Because when your life is placed in his hands, victory is yours. You don't fight for it. You fight from it. What a wonderful statement. I, see, I have the assurity of that in my life. Do you have the assurity of that in yours? So as we go back into this song, as we sing this song, here's what I would love for you to do. 
If you feel the Spirit speaking to you, you feel the truth starting to set in and show you something new. I would love for you to just go, here I am. I'm available. I'm available for you to lead me. I'm available because you have decided from this point forward to make Jesus Lord of your life and to grab hold of the victory that he has promised you. Come on, let's worship.
I pray God has moved in your life through that song in an incredible way and that you did move to this place today to be able to say, God, I am available. You know, when we look at this song, the very first few lines, it says, broken as my life may be, I give you every piece. And I think that's such a powerful proclamation and statement that we look to him and say, I give you every single piece peace. Lord, I, I, I don't think you're looking for me to put myself back together. That's what you want to do. You know, that's the beautiful thing about our Jesus is he gave his life for us while we were still sinners. Matter of fact, Romans 5, 8 says it this way. It says, but Christ proved God's passionate love. I love this. I'm reading this from the Passion Translation, and it just, that fires me up, God's passionate love. And maybe you don't even realize that today, but during our song and during our time of singing and during this time of message together, God's opened up your eyes and your heart to be able to see that truth for your life. And that's a truth that you're putting on right now. That's something that you're taking from God's word and you're strapping onto your feet to go into battle. And now you do have Jesus as the breastplate of righteousness over your life. But it says, Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place. You know, I think of this and I think of the battle. I think of the battle. Jesus already went into the battle for your life. Matter of fact, he's already won the war. He's already won the war for your life. Praise God for that. By dying in our place, there we were on the battlefield, uncertain as to what we were going to do. And he comes showing up, riding in, and he gave his life for ours while we were still lost and ungodly. He didn't watch from the sidelines to make sure that we had it figured out. No, he saw there's one of mine that's lost. There's one of mine that hasn't been saved. There's one of mine that doesn't know victory through me. I'm gonna come rushing in so they can put me on as a garment to protect their life. And I come and live inside of them at the core of who they are and their life will be changed forever. If you know that's what God is doing in your life right now, like you're sensing it right now in your battle, you know that's what he's doing. I want to say a prayer. And from your heart to his, I just want you to say something like this. Dear Jesus, today, today, I welcome you in to my battle. The battle for my life that Satan has been coming against me for so long. And I've given him ground. Today, Jesus, I accept what you have done for me that you have forgiven me of all of my sins. Lord, thank you for forgiving me. I want you to forgive me. Thank you for doing so. So from this point forward, I grab hold of the truth. I put you on as my breastplate. And God, I will dive into your word so my feet are ready from this point forward for every battle that I'll go into because I need to stand firm I need these things to stand firm. No longer do I want to try and do it on my own. I only want to do it with you, Jesus. If you said that prayer just now, you have victory. Heaven is your home. Welcome to the family. Greatest decision that you have ever or ever will make. Your eternity is secure. So now it's time to put him on and live out the life that Jesus has called us to live out. And I would love to come alongside you and help you in this. And so here's how I would love to do this. If you do me a huge favor, if you will text right now, pull out your device, and if you will text right now, follow Jesus, all right? You need to put follow Jesus all together. You can see it on the screen below me. If you will put follow Jesus to 94000, send that to us. That will let us know that today, right now in this moment, Jesus has come in to be a part of your life and and that you will never be the same. And we want to come alongside you and rejoice and celebrate and resource you and help you out in this incredible, amazing walk that you have made the decision to live out close to Jesus. We want to be here for you. Listen, there's some great things on our website that we would love for you to connect with as well. Matter of fact, if you'll run over to our website, centralcitychurch.online, if you'll go over to the website, 
there's a place that you can let us know your prayer request. You can connect with us there and maybe you've got a battle that you're facing or you're going through and, and you know Jesus is a part of it, but man, all these lies keep coming in and victory seems difficult. We want to stand in the gap with you today and from here forward. So please let us know the prayers that you are needing us to stand in the gap and be with you in through this. We want to help you in this. So let us know. Go over there, click the button prayer request and let us us know. There's other great resources and things available through our website stuff for your students. Make sure students, you're connecting there. Things are going on for our kids available right there. Let's matter of fact, as this message wraps up, I would love if you go ahead and if you've got a six and under or six and up, go click on the website, their place. There's an age appropriate message just for them, a time of worship. Listen to me, parents. Our kids are going through battles too, and they need to be well equipped and you get to play a part in leading them into battle with Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So let's be awesome parents leading our kids in a dynamic and an amazing way. I want to tell you thank you so much for your, just your heart to be a part of Central City Church through your giving. We exist and we get to do what we do because of you. And it's only because of you. We're able to continue to live out what Central City is called to live out because you have decided to partner with God through this church. You don't give to a church. You give through a church to make a difference for the kingdom. We're reaching ministries and making a difference in ministries. We're reaching people here in our own community. We're reaching all across the globe, and we are seeing the kingdom of heaven populated, and you're playing a part in that. So I just want to tell you, thank you so much. I want you never to feel pressure from me to give whatsoever. It's always something between you and God. So just take time. God, what would you have me to give? And there's three different ways that you can do that. You can text in to give, or you can give online through the website, or even you can mail it in. However that you need to be able to do so, we would love to partner with you in making a difference. I love you guys so much. We have some great things coming down the pipe real soon. We'll be sharing them with you. So make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. Make sure that we have your email. We're all staying connected through every platform possible because you don't want to miss out on the things we intend to share with you over the next few weeks of what it's going to look like of us being back together. I love you so much, and I'll see you again real soon.